Four times, four individuals left this amusement park with broken bones in their necks, chest, and backs. Four times, the incidents weren't reported on time, and four times yet another victim who could have been saved suffered at the hands of negligence. This video is a tale of what happens when corporate negligence is left unchecked, leaving poor, unsuspecting individuals with scars and injuries that would last a lifetime. Fuji Q Highland Amusement Park, the beloved destination for thrill seekers, is in Fuji Yoshida. The majestic Mount Fuji overshadowed the park and is home to several exhilarating attractions. One spectacle that stood out was the Do Dodonpa roller coaster. At least that was until a string of tragic accidents stained its fame. As it turns out, more than you could imagine. Inaugurated in 2017, the Dododampa roller coaster was renowned for its unique engineering marvel. Unlike conventional roller coasters that rely on gravity after an initial climb, Dododampa's cars were mechanically propelled. Let's take a moment to learn more about Dododampa. Imagine a vast steel beast that sticks out from other roller coasters worldwide. Dododampa went a different way than most roller coasters, which used the force of gravity to move. A machine shot forward its cars, and in just one and a half seconds, they reached 111 miles per hour, which is fast enough to make your heart stop. This unique, lightning-fast acceleration drew the adrenaline junkies in, offering them the ride of their lives. But for some people, this promise became a harsh reality. The riders of this thrilling ride didn't just walk away with a racing heart and an adrenaline rush. For some, their day of excitement turned into a horrifying reality as they walked away or in some cases, were carried away with fractured bones. A bone fracture. Imagine the gravity, the pain, the horror. Bones that form the structural framework of our body. Bones designed to withstand substantial force, shattered. And it's not just from a single isolated incident, but a harrowing series of accidents. What could have caused such frequent recurrences? Is it something inherent in the roller coaster's design, or perhaps a disturbing overlook in safety measures? As the tale unfolds, the unsettling truth becomes clear. In December 2020, the air was chilly and filled with anticipation of the year's end festivities. Among the park's visitors was a woman in her 30s, seeking an exhilarating ride on Dododonpa. Picture her excitement, the adrenaline rushing through her veins as the roller coaster picked up speed. But little did she know, her life was about to change. Hours after her ride, severe pain replaced the thrill and excitement. She sought medical attention, only to be hit with a chilling discovery. Her neck and chest bones, structures designed to protect the most vital parts of our body, were fractured. Can you just imagine the level of force required to inflict such damage? The medical personnel projected a recovery period of two months, two months of excruciating pain, all from a single ride on a roller coaster. A tragic accident indeed, but wasn't just a freak one-off incident. The reality, as we'll soon see, was far more disturbing. With the first incident, one might assume it was just a tragic anomaly. However, as the calendar pages turned, the disturbing pattern of injuries emerged, painting a far more alarming picture. In May 2021, another victim fell prey to the deceptive thrill of the Dododonpa, a man in the prime of his life, in his 40s. Unlike the previous victim, this victim's injuries were on his backbone, a compression fracture, the doctors declared. That's an injury typically seen in car accidents or high-impact sports, not a day out at an amusement park. Picture a month of recovery, a month grappling with a pain no roller coaster ride should inflict. Barely two months later, a woman in her 50s dared the Dododampa ride in July. She emerged not with a smile of thrill, but with injuries echoing those of the previous victims. Fractures in her neck and backbone, the injuries that haunt you long after the ride ends. Yet, despite these tragedies, the ride continued to operate. After each incident, park staff examined the roller coaster, its rails, and the equipment. They investigated the ride's shocking speed, yet they found no problems. Could all these victims be merely the result of carelessness? Were they simply not seated properly? That's the conclusion the park came to. However, don't you find it odd? Amidst the 210,000 riders, only a select, unlucky few experienced these severe injuries. Were they all coincidentally careless, or was something more sinister at play? Something lurked beneath the surface, behind the veil of mechanical checks and speed controls. The stakes escalated as the Dododonpa continued running, and the invisible dice of fate remained in play. The question remained, who would be next, 
As the summer heat of August blazed on, the Dododonpa's fate took a dramatic turn. The invisible dice of fate rolled again and chose a fourth victim. Another man in his thirties, another excited thrill-seeker, unaware of the ordeal that awaited him. This time, the consequences were impossible to ignore. The man had a compression fracture in his neck, and the same injury known to be caused by high-impact accidents now linked to a roller coaster ride. All these took place after the ride. What a situation. The sheer magnitude of this injury marked a distressing escalation in the severity of the incidents. Finally, the alarm bells were too loud to be silenced. On the day of the fourth accident, August 12th, the authorities decided that the Dododonpa would suspend its operations. It was time for a full inspection, a deep dive into every bolt and gear, every nook and cranny of the attraction. The authorities said enough about the injuries existing and still counting. Was this decision timely, or did it come too late? If the shutdown had occurred earlier, what could have been prevented? And more importantly, what would the inspection reveal about the beloved, yet seemingly dangerous Dododonpa? In the aftermath of the fourth accident and the consequent silence of the Dododonpa, the park grudgingly revealed the chain of incidents to the prefectural government. But this report was far from immediate. Can you believe the park waited from December 2020 till August 17, 2021 to inform the authorities formally? Nearly eight months of incidents, injuries, and silence. Governor Kotaro Nagasaki was far from pleased. I think that if they reported them earlier and took appropriate actions, the park could have prevented some accidents," he said at an August 20th news conference. His words hung heavy, a reminder of the potential consequences of delay and inaction. Could some victims have been spared their pain if the park had reacted sooner? The park officials did not shy away from these criticisms. The prefectural government told us that we should have reported it earlier. There were some gaps in understanding the situation among us a park official admitted. They acknowledged their shortcomings and desired to respond to the matter more appropriately. The park officials had learned a harsh lesson. The consequences of not reporting the incidents early were clear and tragic. But the question lingers. How much of this tragedy could have been averted with more timely action? What are the lessons that other parks around the world can learn from the painful saga of the Dododompa? Let's delve deeper into the aftermath of this horrifying sequence of events. As the chilling incidents surrounding the Dododonpa unraveled, the role of the prefectural government in prioritizing public safety became increasingly apparent. They decided to bring this sequence of events into the light of general knowledge. This a stark warning that sometimes the thrill of adventure needs to be balanced by a solid commitment to safety. When they shared this news with the public, they explained, a string of accidents occurred and we judged that they were serious cases, and so we announced them. These words echo the essence of transparency, the responsibility of ensuring that fun and entertainment do not compromise human life and well-being. As the terrifying story of the Do Dodonpa ends, there is still a sense of unease and a careful glimmer of hope. The tragedy is a critical lesson for amusement parks worldwide, and it is a harsh wake-up call about how dangerous it can be to ignore safety measures. How will this incident reshape how we approach the adrenaline-pumping world of roller coasters and theme parks? Will stricter safety protocols and regulations come into play? Will we see a transformation in how operators handle such attractions to ensure no thrill-seeker has to pay the price for their fun with their well-being?